Hello, everybody. Average Gamer, and welcome to another Supreme Ultimate Guide. Be uh, J words. <laughs> Let's start that all over again. Bridge your body, your bread, wire your ball, up. Hello, everybody. Average Gamer, and welcome to another Beginner's Guide tutorial in Supreme Ruler Ultimate. In this episode, I thought I would go with the economy. Um, generally, debt, um, shortfalls, um, kind of how to figure out little things here and there. Basically, this is just an overall. Um, we're gonna call it an economics, economics 101 in this episode. We're gonna break down some information associated with uh, with economics in the game. Hopefully, some of this stuff will help you and things like that. First ones first. As a country, debt is bad. Um, if you have a quote unquote notable debt level, which I'll show you where to find that in a second, um, that's not good. That means that a significant amount of your income, a large amount of your income, at least a percentage of your income, is going to your debt. Um, think of it as uh, a credit card, basically. Uh, you've used it. You you've used up a credit card. You now have to pay that back. You don't have to pay it all back, but you got to pay at least a minimum payment every day, every month, um, in the game. Right? You got to pay back a little bit every day, and you only have a set amount. Depending on what your credit limit is, you're kind of capped at a certain percentage. Um, also, your interest rates and all that stuff are fluctuating over time, depending on how much money you have income how big your country is, how your GDP is, how your inflation is, and all that stuff. Also gauges how your credit rating is. Um, so, what we're going to do, I'm just going to go over a quick little, some some point form things here that uh, you, you might want to know. And the first thing is mainly the expense report. So, first thing with the expense report, which is right, y'all, very important. I've gone into it before, exactly what each thing is, and hovered over it. But I just wanted to go back into it really quickly. So your state is for your espionage, uh, covert operations, your supporting nations, you know, if you're supporting another country, UN membership, um, and things like that. Anything that basically you're, you know, it's all that stuff can create expenditure in, uh, in the states tab. Next one is the treasury. So that's uh, facility management, which is the cost of facilities in your region. Uh, putting unused facilities offline will reduce these expenses. Social services, which are important for maintaining domestic approval, um, they can be quite the financial burden there in here as well. Um, interests, loan payments, uh, construction costs, all that stuff is in here. Overdraft as well for your interest if you're in debt. Uh, production, well, just production, right? It's the, This is how much it's costing to produce commodities, um, now it can be offset by domestic sales, uh, exports to, you know, the regions obviously selling stuff, uh, with very high GDP, as I mentioned in a previous video, uh, may cause high labor costs, which cause obviously the production to be a little bit more expensive than normal. Um, uh, this is, this can be compared to the domestic sales plus the last day's trade to evaluate, you know, just how much money you're making. Next one is your research. This is how much your research is costing you. Simple as that. Um, the overall amount your projects are costing you. And overall, the amount of research efficiency. Uh, research efficiency is basically just how good and how efficient you are at, uh, you know, making your making it work, making it work. Um, military, well, just that. It's right, all those planes, tanks, uh, you know, armored personnel carriers and boats and aircraft and you name it. This is how much it's costing you. So, unit production right now is the amount you're producing for the military. Preparedness is how much money you're spending to have the military prepared to go to war. And then last but not least, the military itself. Um, that's how much you're actually spending on the unit. That's like the upkeep and the maintenance and things like that. And overall, it's got your little breakdown down here. Now, one thing you can do is use the two here specifically. So your income and your expense reports. So the income report is exactly that. So here's your state. This is how much, you know, when you make money. Treasury, obviously, your, you know, your income report and all that stuff. It, it's very important as, as well. Um... We're going to get into that here. So, state is your income from your state department. Pretty simple, right? It's not common that you get this anywhere. Foreign aid, you get stuff now and then. Uh, that's usually if the EUN really, really likes you. You get UN subsidies. They might show up in here. But um, it's really not much, to be honest with you. Um, so, for example, if you're someone supporting you, like another country is giving you f f support, f uh, like we would, like you would do, um, you would, it would show up here. Treasury, well, this is how much money you're making in taxes, right? How much uh, loans you have and how much interest you have on said loans. 
Um, and one of the major resources, obviously, is taxation. Um, now, a couple things to note is that extreme high taxation will be less efficient than low tax rate. Um, it's basically because people, it's they've built it into the game where the higher the taxation, the more probable it is that people won't pay taxes. Simple as that. Uh, depending also on your region, yeah, tax rates may need to be a little different. So one tax rate, for example, that would be good in one country may not be good in the country even next to it. So you always got to remember that. Um, also watch your domestic approval as well. And that will also help you with your taxes. Uh, production, which is the next one. This is how much money you're making off of production. This is how much money you're making off your domestic sales. So this is the stuff that's staying internally to your country, and this is how much you're, you're making off of it. Um, this should be, theoretically, your second largest source of income. Uh, high prices decrease consumption, but increase your revenues. So it's definitely an offset. And last but not least, research and defense. Um, they don't generate income. They just, well, they always just cost money. So overall, the budget themselves. So surplus and deficits. Uh, basically, your treasury department presents, well, presents it to you, right? They give it to you right here. Here's your income. Here's your expenses. This is your surplus and deficit. Uh, one thing, you always have to pay attention to this depending on what's going on. Now, it can always be, it can be in the red all the time. That's no big deal. A perfectly normal balanced budget, quote unquote, is as long as this number here and this number here are also equal. Basically, as long as this is going up, you're good. So we can be in a deficit, but as long as you're trading still more money, that's still classified as a balanced budget. Um, the issue here is that when commodity trades are at zero, like say you're doing no trades whatsoever, the surplus and deficit should be as close to zero as possible. If not in the red, or sorry, not in the, in the black, in this case, in the game, in the yellow. Um, if it's the negative, obviously, which it is right now, it's negative a million, it's not the greatest, right? You would want this to be in the in in the yellow is what we're looking at. Um, you don't always want to depend on trade. Like I know like our, in our last play, that's one of our big dependencies is on trade, um, selling a lot of stuff to the world markets while we kind of situate everything, which is what we're going to be doing over the next couple episodes. That's you know, one of those things, right? A couple of things that will pop up as well on this screen. Um, like, for example, here, this one says the treasury. 5.8 billion, but right here, this region has a noble debt level, which we'll get into. And then sometimes here you'll see it'll pop up saying that there's a shortfall. Best thing to do is click on this, and it's one of these. Somewhere in here, there's a shortfall. Um, for example, for defense, um, there could be not enough people. Uh, for research, um, not enough people, or not enough, uh, not enough money. Production, there could be issues with power. Um, it will show up here that there's a shortfall in production because there's some power issues, which are then causing the reduction in production. Treasury, um, you owe too much money. Basically, the compute, the game, the AI, if it's turned on, your minister has had to buy, taken out a loan or issued a bond to counteract the fact that you actually are losing money somewhere. And last but not least, the state, that's no big deal. Because <laughs> then, nothing. You never get shortfalls in the state. Now, how do you know which it is? Well, as you hover over it, it'll pop up here somewhere. You'll see it. It'll show you. And usually, next up to ten, something pops up up here telling you what the shortfall is. If it just says shortfall here and doesn't do anything here, nine times out of ten, it's going to be either not enough people for your military, not enough power for your production. It's so going to be one of those two. Um, sometimes it's a quick shortfall in money. If it doesn't show up anywhere, like if nothing shows up here at all, um, if it's units in defense, for example, but you'll notice in your military tab how many people you have versus reserve personnel. So you should be able to kind of put the, the math in there when you look to see how much the unit costs to produce and how many people you have in reserve type thing. So you'll know right there if it's the person or not. And like I said, nine times out of ten, it will say here if it's a military issue or not. If the units are going into reserve, you don't need the people in your military, so it shouldn't pop up saying that. So nine times out of ten, if it does pop up here saying that there's a shortfall, it's probably in production, meaning that there's an electrical power problem, 
and it should show up. If it doesn't show up, then nine times out of ten, it's a treasury issue, and it would have been corrected automatically. And it's basically the AI saying, hey, we had an issue with a shortfall for money, and the AI immediately takes out a bond anyways to kind of counteract it. It's not the best thing. Now, speaking of bonds, Sweden here has a quote-unquote notable debt level. It's a bad thing, right? You're always spent you're spending a lot of money back in your stuff. So like right now, for example, uh do 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 domestic approval rating, come on. There it is. Uh, bu- 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 our bond debt. So when you hover over here, it shows you. Right now, our bond debt. We have one hundred and thirty four billion dollars in debt. It's a lot of money, right? It's a lot of fucking money. So when you think of it. Our annual interest right now sitting is roughly around 3.7 of that 124 million. You have to pay it back every day. So right now, if we wanted to, we could take out an $841 million bond if we want to, which we won't because it's not efficient. What you can do though is right here. I think I have to uh, unpause the game here. Whoops, that's V. There we go. Okay, so right here, it shows you all your bonds. All you do is click your minister, and they're showing up all right here. The interest rate, the amount the bond is, and the initial mature date. It's basically every year on its anniversary date is when the bond comes up. Now, as you scroll over the bonds, you'll notice in this case for Sweden, they're all the same. They fluctuate, they change as things go on. As you spend money, the he will take out loan bonds or not. Now, a couple things you can do, and this is something I really like to do because I don't trust the AI, because the AI, depending on what you tell it to, for example, up here, it will take out bonds a lot. Uh, you can actually tell it right here. If you tell it, da, 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 uh, improve credit rating, it will take out bonds. It will pay bonds, but then take another one out. Not a big fan of it, right? Uh, increase revenues. This will cause an increased treasury. The game will issue bonds. As you can see, raise taxes, reduce spending, and issue bonds. Um, usually what I'll do is I'll tell it, hey, I want you to increase revenues and increase my treasury, but then I'll lock the AI out of issuing bonds. That way he doesn't borrow us into debt. Debt is a really big thing in the game, right? The more debt you have, the worse it is. Look at the U.S. government right now in real life. They, they, they owe so much money, it's, it's, it's insane. And I'm just going to take a sip of my coffee. So, if you have a lot of money, like right now we actually have uh, 5.8 billion, but all of you, if you notice, all of our bonds are 11. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and fast forward a little bit and see if I can get us some more money here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This doesn't work. Yeah, they're not making that much, enough money. If I turn cheats on for a quick second here. Nope. So until I don't do this often. Is it cheat? Oh, okay, there it is. Yeah, I don't do this often, so. <laughs> um, there we go. So that gave us a hundred million, or one hundred billion. So what we're going to do is we're going to pay. I show you how to reduce your 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 uh, your uh, your debt. So what you do once you have enough money. So say for example you are a hundred million dollars in debt. So we'll scroll over here real quick. We are one hundred and thirty-four billion dollars in debt. We have one hundred and five billion dollars. Now, we can't pay it all back in one lump sum, unfortunately. It's not like uh, some games where they can just click a button, pick the amount of the uh, amount you want to pay back, and it boom, pays back a bunch of your debt. Unfortunately, unlike a credit card, uh, unfortunately, think of it as you have more than one credit card. right? So you got a Visa, American Express, Discover, um, and uh, Capital One. You can't just turn around and say, okay, here's $100, and then they have to decide who's getting the $100. You actually have to physically, and one thing you have to remember, note is this game has to be set to normal, or the speed at least to normal, 
if not fast, to do this the best way. Click on the bond you want to pay back. Usually I use the oldest bond or, or whichever one's A, the highest amount or the highest rate. Screw which one was taken at when. I always look at the highest rate and the highest amount. So right now they're all at the same amount, so we're not too worried about anything. But we're going to take this one right here at 5.8%. Right here, the little red little uh, little bond here says repurchase bond. Basically, you're buying back your own debt. So you can purchase it back and it, well, it goes away. You'll notice it immediately hits you pretty hard. But, and it shows obviously in your serve, in your, in your debt here. But we're going to purchase. And you'll notice the exact amount you're purchasing it for is for the 11 plus the 3.5%. So we're now it's 49, right? You figure if we were to pay it back, it would drop us down to 38. Obviously, it's not going to. Well, actually, did we? Oh, that one did. We probably wasn't that old. But as you see, we're here even shows. We're 100 now. We're $130 million in the hole right now. And we hover over it. And we can see. 126. So if we look, we click kind of these two real quick. Well, our treasury is really shit, and our production is is pretty good. I always like to see production at least two thirds, at least two thirds higher, right? And we can see, okay, well, obviously a lot of money is being lost in the treasury. So right now we're making, we're spending four hundred seventeen million in social services. So obviously you'd have to cut your social services, which is down here or right here, which obviously. I won't get into too much, but basically that's pretty much what you got to do. If you're having issues with, for example, your, uh, well, let's unpause that with that, with, with, you know, high debt levels and bonds and stuff like that. That's one thing you need to do. You need to actually sit back and buy back all these bonds. Like right now we only got, uh, let's scroll over now. Just after that, only 33,000 or 33 billion in debt now. So we reduced our debt by about two thirds. So now you'll notice that our amount has changed. The amount changed for previous days, minus 33,584. Well, That's our actual debt change, which isn't really that bad, to be honest with you. Um, the only thing I don't like about this is it doesn't show you your actual daily amount you pay back and things like that. Um, I mean, it's got its issues and things like that, but overall, it could be worse. Um... It still says, as long as you have at least one bond out, it will always tell you that you have a notable debt level. And the AI is just going, hey, North Korea has gone to war with Taiwan. Eh, support that, why not? So that is just a quick little tip on, uh, on the economy. So once again, uh, pay attention to your income and expenses. You always want your, obviously, your income above your expenses. Um, always make sure that your surplus and debt is in the yellow. Um, never depend on last day trades to have a good government, a good, uh, you know, a, a balanced quote unquote uh, budget. Always look at these two numbers here. Make sure that obviously the first one is higher than the second one. If not, look into the systems here and see exactly what you need to do to curb production and, and things like that. Um, for certain things, like I mentioned, if production's too high, look for things like GDP. Um, in previous episodes, I've showed you how to modify production and things like that to kind of cut costs. But that is it for this episode. Um, if you have any questions additional to uh, little tips here that I gave you in regards to the economy, I know this is a quick little 18 minute video, but uh, to be honest with you, there's not really much tips I can give you, uh, mainly due to the fact that a lot of countries end up being worked out a different way, right? Like I said, every country has its little tweaks and changes and little quirks in here and there that you have to pay attention to. If you have run a small little tiny country, even raising taxes by 1% or 2% can cause massive, massive changes, right? So always got to like look around and try to figure out what you're going to do to make things equal and, and uh, well, be able to afford those military units so you can take over the world. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.